Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Respected brothers and sisters uh, Hope you're all well and in good health MashaAllah today, uh, well tomorrow MashaAllah Is the first day of Dhul Hijjah MashaAllah The 12th month in the Islamic calendar 1436 MashaAllah And the year, Islamic year has come to an end The Islamic year has almost come to end. only one month to go And generally brothers and sisters, time is absolutely flying Time is absolutely flying if we think back to the last 12 months from Muharram right to Dhul Hijjah and think well, how did this year go, what did we do, what did we achieve, how the time went and you just think oh, SubhanAllah, it's just, we can't really think, it's like a dream, time is going very very fast brothers and sisters, that's why we should try our very very best each moment, each second, each minute which Allah Ta'ala gives us is an opportunity that while we're still breathing to make the best of each moment, make the best of each moment Try to bring ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become the true servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we can make that little bit of sacrifice, beshek, without a doubt, there's, there's difficulties, there's obstacles, there's shaitan, there's nafs, there's um, all sorts of things, um, the environment around us, all sorts of things around us which want to take us away from Allah and which we want us to take, which want to take us away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa However, if we ask Allah for istiqamat, ask Allah for steadfastness, and inshallah we keep on going, we keep on going, then inshallah day will come when we do leave this dunya, Allah Ta'ala will be pleased with all of us inshallah Ta'ala. My respected brothers and sisters, I'd, um, inshallah myself on Wednesday and the 3rd of Dhul Hijjah, uh, 2nd of Dhul Hijjah, I'm heading for Hajj bi uh, Myself and my family, alhamdulillah, it's, it's a great honor. And I feel very privileged that Allah Ta'ala is calling us, that, that's the best way to put it, because a person with his own will, own power, cannot go to a Baytullah unless Allah Ta'ala um, accepts them and Allah Ta'ala invites them. So it's an inv invitation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I feel very honored and privileged. I request all our brothers and sisters to make Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala dua for me. May Allah Ta'ala give me and my family and for all those who judge from all over the world who are coming. May Allah give everybody Hajjim Maqbool, Hajjim Maqbool, inshaAllah Ta'ala. And we come back, oh, shall we say this, we do Hajj in the way Allah and His Rasul want us to do Hajj. And we purely, Allah purifies us with afiyat, inshallah, that all the sins are clean. And we return, inshallah, that if Allah wants us to return in such a way that the way when we were born, when we came into this dunya, we are free of all sins. That's the way we, that's the way we want to return. And with the intention that, inshallah, from today onwards, after we return from Hajj, that we never commit any sins again. That is the idea until we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is pleased with us, inshallah. So I request all of you to make also dua for my Hajj in particular. And for all those people who are going for Hajj this year. Brothers and sisters, the 12th month Dhul Hijjah, Wal Fajr, Wal Ayadin Ash, Wal Shaf'i, Wal Watr, Wal Layli, Ida Yas. These 10 days are the best days of doing Ibadat of Allah Ta'ala. The best 10 days of doing Ibadat are these 10 days. Each day is held so much value. Each night holds so much value. So I, I, I encourage all of you, don't wait for the day of Arafat. Many people think, you know what, the day of Arafat, the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, when it comes, <coughs> People said, oh, we'll do lots of ibadat and al-fat. Al-fat holds its own place. Al-fat is very, very special indeed. It's a day when shaitan wails and shaitan cries and shaitan weeps. When Allah's rahmat comes down in such a way, each and every person is forgiven by Allah Ta'ala. Each and every person and shaitan just throws dust upon himself. But throughout the whole year, I made such an effort on these people. And in one moment and in a few seconds, Allah Ta'ala wipes the slate clean. Allah forgives each and every person. So Al-fat is a very, very special day and we should make lots of dua to Allah Ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa and never lose hope in Allah's mercy. La taqnatu min rahmatillah. Go all guns blazing and ask Allah for dunya and ask Allah for akhirat. Ask Allah for dunya and ask Allah for akhirat. This mean dunya. We, this dunya is a place where we need asbab, where our, our needs. And who's going to fulfill our needs? None, none, none other than Allah subhanahu wa taala. So brother says, abs. But ask Allah. But ask Allah. You know, like look like a little child when you want something from the parents, and they'll cry and they'll cry and they'll cry. Eventually the parents give in and say, alright, have this. We are, not to say Allah will give in, but also we cry like a child of Allah and until Allah has pity upon us, Allah has mercy upon us, and hopefully Allah will do what's best for us, inshaAllah ta'ala. But at least for Mughfirat, and as, at least for Allah, ask Allah ta'ala, Ya Allah, make our dunya stay with, upon deen, inshaAllah. When we go from dunya, Ya Allah, give us husni khatima, and Ya Allah, when we meet you on the day of Qiyamah, Ya Allah, you'll be pleased with us, brothers and sisters. That's the most important. If, if we can go from dunya, because we all have to go. I'm not staying, you're not staying, brothers and sisters. Let's, be, let's 
be honest about it. Whoever has come in dunya has always come to go. Always from Anbiya, from the Awliya, from the Sahaba, from the Tabi'een, Tabi Tabi'een, from those, the kings, the great kings. But where are they today? They, they come in six foot and your brother and sister. So we have to also go to Allah Ta'ala. So let's make Allah Ta'ala ours. Let's make this deen of ours. Let's make Quran ours. And let's follow the ways of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So going back, these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, lots of ibadat, lots of dhikr. If we can fast, try to fast. If we can fast, fast all nine days if we can. Obviously we can't fast on Eid day. 10th of Dhul Hijjah, 11th of Dhul Hijjah, 12th of Dhul Hijjah, 13th of Dhul Hijjah. These are four, four days. And Eid al-Fitr, which are five days we're not allowed to fast. Eid al-Fitr, which is after Ramadan. Then also um, the 10th of Dhul Hijjah, 11th of Dhul Hijjah, 12th of Dhul Hijjah, 13th of Dhul Hijjah. These are four, uh, four other days where we're not allowed to fast at all. These are, um, so five days in the holy we're not allowed to fast. But these first nine days, brothers and sisters, go for it. All can try to fast. If not everyone, every second one. If not everyone, every second one. Whatever is easy for us, but try minimum. To fast on the day of Arafah, inshallah, in Qurbani comes into it, brothers and sisters. Qurbani is wajib upon every single person, upon whose zakat is wajib. We have Sahib and Nisab as well. Um, now, when it comes to Qurbani, many people um, give Qurbani or look for places where they can, where it's cheap. I again recommend, don't look for the cheapest, look for what people need it most. It's slightly expensive, it doesn't matter. Brothers and sisters, we eat meat, mashallah, how many times a week? How many times a month we eat, mashallah? Okay, but look for places in the world. And the thing about qurbani meat, many people think you have to give it away to the poor. It's good to give to the poor, but we can also give qurbani. We can also eat qurbani, and we should eat qurbani meat. And the other thing is, we can also give qurbani meat to people who are non Muslims as well. Okay, so somebody we've got Christian neighbors, we've got people, um, we've got. Um, Sikh neighbors, we got atheists, we got whoever it may be, we can give meat, share it, no problem. It's not so a kurbani meat has to be eaten by a Muslim, kurbani meat can be eaten by anybody. Don't look for the cheapest option, look for the option where how people can benefit people who don't get meat and then and do kurbani there, inshallah. So, but also, many people think in the month of Dhul Hijjah, cutting nails and cutting hair. Now, the ones who are doing kurbani, it is mustahab, I say it again, desirable, okay not to cut and not to clip your nails or not to cut your hair however if somebody was to cut their nails and uh, cut their hair clip their nails cut their hair then there would be no guna there would be no guna okay i hope many people ask what's well, so a comic we can't clip our nails we can't cut our nails. no you can it's mustahab it's desirable it's good so if you want to if you don't want to cut it in the month of the hijjah then a day before the hijjah would be ideal inshallah this for for future uh, reference um lots of ibadat of allah ta'ala Qurbani, I've also, also mentioned, is wajib upon every single one of us. Um, you can also do a Qurbani for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa for the Sahaba, for the Marhumeen, for whoever we want, for whoever we want, we can do Qurbani. Uh, many parents, I know they do it for their younger children, Alhamdulillah, Nur and Allah, Nur, no problem with that at all. Uh, brothers and sisters, um, as we know, the, the, the current crisis in the dunya at the moment, um, especially with the Syrian refugees, the, the situation is very, very bad. We need to make a lot of dua for the whole Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu and especially our brothers and sisters of Syria who are left their homes. And I, I always say this in my Jummah sermon, that who, who would like to leave their home? No, but the Syrian people didn't decide they just want to leave their homes. They came to certain desperate measures that they had to leave their homes. And they're doing it for their children, for doing it for their family, a better place, a better, a more shelter, something to eat, something to drink, education, everything comes into it. Rather than bombs falling on you every single day, they're, they've gone. Brothers and sisters, today we're in a, we're in a comfortable office, tomorrow, today you're probably watching this in the comfort of your home. But brothers, you know, um, we're fortunate Allah has given us this name. We need to thank Allah for this name. Because brothers and sisters, I'm sure the Syrian people didn't see this coming. I didn't think they ever thought that tomorrow they'd have to leave their houses. They've left their houses, they've been forced to leave their houses, they've been taken out of their houses, their houses have been crumbled, they've been bombarded, nothing left of their houses. Brothers, we, it is our duty and our obligation to help our brothers and sisters. We, Rahma Masih, um, I know Ummah Walfa Trust and Imdad Foundation and many other charities, mashallah, are doing a wonderful, wonderful job. Um, we are helping the Syrian refugees. They are coming in to serve you. The place called Plisheva. They are coming there. They usually stop up for 72 hours. So just a couple of days ago, we made an order from Dubai. 7, 25,000 meals, inshallah. They're in pouches. 
and um, these pouches they have biryani, they have chicken, they have vegetable. So we ordered it. So while the Sudan refugees are gonna be in Prishaba, inshallah, we're gonna give them food as much as we can to help them um, wherever they want to go, inshallah. We help you for your support as well. One pound for one meal packet, one pound for one meal packet. So if you can support us in that way, uh, Allah Ta'ala will reward you, inshallah. Ta but also, these are a few things which I wanted to say. Generally, uh, Rahma Mercy Mashallah is doing very, very well, alhamdulillah. We have purchased that new land, well, we've paid 20% of it. We've got another 80% to go. Whatever you can do, inshallah, 50 pounds or one square meter, we'd be very, very grateful if you can donate towards that. Make dua for Rahma Mercy in general. Allah Ta'ala give us, take more work from us, inshallah. Uh, we've hit a target of over 100 madrasas now in the Balkans, alhamdulillah. Things are going steady from strength to strength. To, and I would like to thank all of you for your wonderful and amazing and fantastic support. Without your support, we wouldn't have achieved um, anything like this at all. Obviously, Allah's blessings um, first and foremost, but again, your support, as, uh, without your support, this wouldn't have been possible. So I request you to keep on supporting us, uh, keep on donating, and most importantly, make dua for us. Allah, um, take work from us for years and years to, to come with ikhlas, with sincerity. Allah, give the whole team of Muhammad lots of unity, lots of muhabbat, because the greatest, best thing in anything is when we have unity and muhabbat, when you work together with muhabbat, with ikhlas, then Allah takes it to another level, inshallah. So I request to make dua for me, my satis in the office, the whole team in general, the trustees of Rahmah Mercy. On this, on the point of trustees, I want to mention that Idris Baitutla Nazir, Sayyid Nazir Nazir, two of our very, very old trustees on truth. In fact, since the time the charity was formed, um, they've recently resigned as trustees. Uh, mashallah, they've, they've done amazingly well. Idris Bay due to ill health, um, he, he's a wonderful person, um, he's done great work for Rahmah Mercy, but recently health has been very, very poor and, and on his, at his request we, he decided that he would to step down. He's still part of the team, uh, but as a trustee he couldn't um, continue. Also his partner in crime, Nazid Bay, uh, has also been there, but due to his commitments he's unable to attend meetings as he used to. So Nazid Bay is still, and Idris Bay is still part of Rahmah Mercy, alhamdulillah but no longer trustees. We've got now Abdul Aziz Bay Moti, who was trustee, Mona named Jazz, who was a trustee. The new ones who have been um, drafted in um, is Asif Vora, Alhamdulillah, Salim Vali, and Abdul Rauf Ghali. So we have five uh, trustees now, Alhamdulillah, and myself as the Amir of the trustees. Request for make dua for myself and the whole group, Allah Ta'ala keep us united. Uh, not man united, just united, inshallah Ta'ala, and Allah will take plenty of work from us. Wa'akudu da'wana. And Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.